Hello. In this issue of EITV, I'm going to be asking some leading commentators why the comment media, what we call the commentariat, is so important. Does it actually change policy? Is it the way to go with a campaign to run it through the comment media rather than through the uh, traditional news pages? And in fact, who is using and reading comment? You are one of the esteemed commentariat that editorial intelligence makes its business to cover. Do you think you are esteemed and powerful? Um, yes, of course. I do. But we little people, little people, sometimes big people, when it comes and goes, people, well, that's one of the, uh, the condition, it, it, it coming and going, uh, the self-esteem, because there's no Elvinos. So EI is Elvinos. For us. What do you mean, that journalism has become virtual? That uh, even because of journalism has become fantastically virtual, all that corps d'esprit and jostling of um, those lumps along Fleet Street, um, that's gone. You know, and a huge number of columnists work remotely, and an awful lot of other writers work remotely. You know, those, those places in Canary Wharf and Marsh Wall aren't very populous. Out there, there are people whose opinions informed opinions are as sharp as somebody who is a so-called celebrity name or in a national newspaper. So I think blogging is making opinion and comment more democratic, but yes, I do agree with you that I think people, comment editors, particularly those who are not seen to follow the proprietor's party line, are going to be more important in terms of the appeal of a newspaper. The people who work fantastically well as columnists are people who express the values of their readerships, who really, apt Linda Lee Potter, absolutely, I mean, it's a different, it's a different paradigm now, but Linda Lee Potter exactly knowing how to play on that male readership. It's very important. Kim, do you believe, as I believe, that the commentariat are becoming the lifeblood of the media and are increasingly important. Yeah, in some ways I think they're the only thing left that's different because actually you get the news from everywhere. Uh, if you look at free newspapers which don't have comment in them, actually they're fantastically boring to look at. So actually what makes the spice, what makes you pick up a newspaper, or at least what makes me pick up a newspaper now, is much more to do with comment than what is news. What we are interested in therefore, if we're sceptical or questioning about what we're reading in newspaper as fact, or indeed if you're a Generation Y, you may not even be reading a newspaper at all, is comment and opinion. Uh, because you, know, you can take the opinions on board and sort of argue with it in your mind or on the Today programme's uh, message board, uh, but you're not being asked to absorb it as fact. And some of the best writers today, people like Alice Miles in The Times, I may not agree with her, but she's not writing so that I agree with her. She's expressing an opinion and and adding to a debate which is going on across the country, uh, in this case about the Labour leadership. A lot of people like me are, are persuaded that the unpaid opinionated are just as valuable actually in terms of public opinion as the paid opinionated, but there's a big, well, big vested interest in trusted media in saying there, there isn't. Because I was paid for 25 years to write, of course I've gone around saying well if they're any good they get paid to do it, but actually that's a bit unfair and I think some bloggers are extremely good. I think some blogs are just awful solipsism about my life and they're fantastically tedious. Even the so-called sexy ones are fantastically tedious after a while. I think some bloggers however are raising really interesting matters and it's, and it's very interesting if you look at the level of debate, if you look at what The Guardian's been doing in putting commentary online and then encouraging people to join the debate, you get a really interesting contribution, not from everyone, but from quite a few people. And I think you're finding that, that there are people whose opinions are just as valid. And of course, that's given some problem for the commentators, some of whom have said, this isn't fair, they're not professionals, they haven't been through the training. Well, actually, it's not a question of the training, it's really a question of your opinions. I think <laughs> um, there's a lot of cross amongst, I mean, uh, the need for columnists. Are you going to name is, names there? No, no. Um, the need for columnists is shaped by uh, the fact that everything else that newspapers do is commodified now. You can get it elsewhere. Um, you can get it in greater depth elsewhere. Um, uh, all sorts of ways of accessing all that other stuff. News, consumer information, and every sort of, you know, in a world where uh, Bradshaw and Wisdom have disappeared, so as that role, you know, that r role of a broadsheet. So, columnists are, are fantastically important because of that. But if you winnow out amongst columnists, 
some columnists are fantastically influential, their first ground of influence is other columnists. Columnists read other columnists assiduously, pathetically. As I've said in, in, in the future, the thing that's going to differentiate media are the quality of things like the comment, because that is unique. I've also read perfectly wise authorities, people like Kevin Marsh, ex of the Today programme, who says, no, in the future, there'll be no need for comment because you can get comment everywhere. I think what will differentiate it will be the professionalism of comment, how well-informed comment is seen to be, and frankly, whether it deserves to be read, whether it's sufficiently entertaining.